ho, ho. I hope you've all been good this year because Santa Flick has a special present for all of you. It's looking at my stupid face for the next two hours where we can talk about anything and everything that you guys want to talk about. So Merry Christmas to everyone. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, well... Have a good day. Either way, thanks for joining me once again for a brand new live show. It's been a few weeks, but we're back now. Uh, sorry for the delay on this live show. After talking about Avatar in a 20-minute movie review last week, it sort of just wiped me out. It exhausted me. Uh, and then I did see the movie again recently, a few days ago. And I will say, I still enjoy the movie, but it did lose a lot of the wow factor, and I knew that going in for a second viewing, it's much it's much like the first Avatar. I still enjoy looking at it. Sure, the story has been done a million times before. Uh, as I've always said, James Cameron is not reinventing storytelling. He's just reinventing a new way to visualize those stories, and that's fine by me. But I will say, on that second viewing of Avatar The Way of Water, it was one of the worst... Maybe not the worst theater experiences, that's exaggerating, but it was a really shitty theater experience in which we went to a packed auditorium and there was a group of people that brought five kids with them, many of which were like three or four years old. And during the entire runtime of this three hour movie that started at nine o'clock at night, keep in mind, it's a three hour movie that started at nine o'clock at night on a Sunday night. So logic would tell you if you have critical thinking skills, unlike these morons that sat in the front row with their five kids, the movie is going to be over at midnight. We have little kids with us. Tomorrow is a school day. Okay, the logic still probably lost on them. But during the movie, these kids, because they're young, they're dumb. I, I don't blame the children. I will never blame the kids that are crying or running around in a movie theater. I will simply blame their stupid moronic parents who lack the, the critical thinking skills or the chromosomes needed to be an intelligent human being. Basically, these are people that should just be bacteria under a log out in the woods. That's what these people are to me. Anyway, back to the story. Uh, during, the, during the movie, every 10 minutes, these little kids would get up and start running around the auditorium. But not just running, no, 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 stomping around the auditorium. Then they'd run out the door run back in, set their seats, watch seven minutes of the movie, and then repeat the process once again. <sighs> so anyway, that's why I hate auditoriums, and that's why I hate people. I, I, I like the movie theater. I like movies. I like you guys. I just hate society. And that's the problem with going to movie theaters nowadays. And by the way, thank you guys for all the beautiful, glorious Christmas super chats here. Uh, someone said James Cameron reinvented the gay. I don't know what that means, but if being gay is a nine foot tall blue alien in a tropical paradise where you can swim in the, the bright blue, luscious, vivid waters of Pandora, then I guess I want to be gay too. But anyway, back to my story. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I forgot what I was even saying. Anyway, yeah, the theater experience anymore is like a 50-50. You don't know what you're going to get. And that's why I hate going. Like, that's why it's hard for me to get excited about going to the movie theater anymore. I want to be. I would love to be. But it's just like, okay, am I going to enjoy this experience? Or am I going to be annoyed as shit for three hours and have to pay for it? That's why I just enjoy watching movies at home. And I will say the first viewing of Avatar The Way of Water, I did get to see a special press screening of it. And uh, that was glorious. There was like seven people in the auditorium. It was in a IMAX screen. Oh, that was the way to experience the movie. But anyway, yeah, I uh, I hate people. That is the moral of the story. And Avatar the second time around, yeah, it, it just like I really was like watching it with the most cynical eyes I ever could because the first time I just I enjoyed it I let go the second time I'm like okay I'm gonna nitpick the shit out of this movie and I did nitpick the shit out of this movie so I might do a special spoiler review of the movie don't get me wrong I still really enjoy it but there was just some blatantly obvious uh formulaic repeats by Cameron so we'll leave it there and now let's dive into your questions and once again Merry Christmas everyone <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining me, guys. Let's let's get into it here. And I don't want to miss a question here, so I'm going to scroll up. So just in case, because sometimes sometimes bad things happen to good people. OK. The first one comes from Chad Hagen. How's it going, Chad? Remakes, reboots. Is there any that you wish for? 
Well, remakes, reboots. I, I, don't if you can if Hollywood can crap out a phenomenal remake of a classic movie that I enjoy, or maybe a movie that wasn't that great the first time around. I'm all for it. I'll give you a prime a prime example. And speaking of prime, real quick, sorry. I, I bought a few of these the other day, and I'm going to get to your question, Chad. Don't you worry. I bought a few of these Prime drinks the other day, and these come from Logan Paul. And I, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to try them. I'm a connoisseur of fine liquids, and I liked the vivid coloring of the bottle. I liked the way it looked, and I was hoping it would taste half as good. I will say this. Does this taste atrocious? No. Does it taste like horse piss and battery acid? No, it does not. But what it does taste like is cheap Kool-Aid that's slightly watered down. So if that's what you want to pay $3 for, then you should probably get prime drinks. There's no special ingredients in here. It's just water and some carbs, and I, I don't think there's much else going on in here. It says there's some vitamins, so, but there's, like, no caffeine. Uh, there is, uh, there's four carbohydrates and four protein. Anyway, yeah, I, one off from me. So anyway, those are my thoughts <laughs> on Prime Energy. As far as reboots, um... One of my favorite action films of all time is Point Break, a 1991 classic starring Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze. If you've never seen it, well, you probably should after this live stream. Don't go just yet. Either way, when it came to the remake of that back in 2015, I was looking forward to that. For years and years, there were rumors about a Point Break, Point Break remake in the works. Originally, at one point, they were going to call it Heat Seekers. And it was going to be sort of a loosey-goosey Point Break remake instead of the copy-and-paste, really shitty disaster abomination against humanity that Hollywood crapped out into our eyeballs, or at least into my eyeballs back in 2015. But as, as far as like other remakes and reboots I'd like to see, uh, off the top of my head, no. I mean, really, no. There's some continuations of stories I wouldn't mind seeing that I know most people would say, no, don't ever do that. But for me, I'll tell you one, and it'll probably never happen because the creators behind it sort of said they don't ever want to make it happen. But I think a continuation of something like Back to the Future would be okay. Don't reboot it. Absolutely not. But what I am saying is a continuation um, maybe like a loose sequel to Back to the Future. I think there's a lot of st fun stuff you could do there uh, that wasn't explored. I mean, it's a time travel movie. The possibilities are somewhat endless, and it would be nice if at least Michael J. Fox and, and Christopher uh, Lloyd could have some kind of cameo in the movie. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's one continuation I'd like to see. As far as reboots, off the top of my head, no, not really. Uh, the next one's going to come from Ender Sandoval. Hey, John, I need your help. The Jim Bros caught me listening to the Birds of Prey soundtrack. What should I do? Happy holidays. Well, first things first, you can never go back to the gym. It's over, man. It's over. You, you got to go somewhere else. Cancel your membership immediately and leave. Better get masses, massive amounts of plastic surgery and then return. That is it. That's the only two options you have, unfortunately. It's okay. You'll be okay. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. I remember a time or two where I thought my Bluetooth was connected right in the middle of the gym and I'm wearing like a cutoff. I'm all sweaty and veiny and dripping and just covered in man juices, my own man juices. Okay. And, uh, I think like Lady Gaga was playing when I went to play my song and it wasn't connected and it was just blurting out as loud as it possibly could. And, um, that was, uh, that was embarrassing. Yeah. But you know what? I owned it. I owned it. And then I started doing the best bench press of my life listening to Poker Face. Don't judge me. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one here. The next one comes from Michael Parton. Merry Christmas, John. Meet me under the mistletoe. No, thank you, sir. But if we ever do go to Pandora together, we can connect ponytails under the tree of life. And that's where our, that's the only place I'm willing to do such a thing. Uh, but thanks for the question. Uh, and, and Merry Christmas to you too, Michael. We got one here from OU Reviews. Intergalactic Free Willy, second act, was way too slow. Um, no, you know my biggest issue with Pandora is really the first act. Once they get, or did I just call it Pandora, Avatar the Way of Water? Once they get to the oceans of Pandora, I enjoy the movie. It's just fun to visually look at. It does get a little self-indulgent with some of the whale shit. I do agree. Once it shows that POV shot of the whale, and it has like this very 
yellowy color grading to it. I'm like, I don't know about this. The, he's really talking to this whale. Like they're really communicating here. But yeah, it, it was like free willy in space. But then again, does that sound bad? I, like, like uh, people make, and my, I'm guilty as well. I've made all these comparisons that James Cameron knocked off, some of which are his own creations that he copy and pasted again. But the thing is, this time it has blue, pa- blue people in space. And for some reason, I can't get mad at that. I'm just like, okay, if you're going to copy shit, at least you have blue people in it. Cool. I can, I can deal with that. Uh, the next one comes from... Night King 01. I just went on a 90 Steven Seagal movie binge with my brother. It was painful and hilarious. I lost some brain cells, but it was a small price to pay. You know, even as a kid watching Steven Seagal movies like um, Under Siege, I just never, ever was a fan of Steven Seagal. I just could, like, even with all of the movie magic applied to Steven Seagal and his lack of talent or ability. I've always been able to just see through the facade. The dude looks like a rigid mannequin with a ponytail and I just never bought his shit and I never liked him. I don't know what it is. I'm, I read people very well. And even as a kid, I remember like the first time I watched a Steven, Steven Seagal movie, I looked at that guy and I was like, I don't know what it is. I just, I just don't like him. And I feel like I was, I was, I was right. <laughs> so yeah, if you're going to watch an action, go on an action binge, Steven Seagal is just not when you go. Like if you want to have a good time and have some laughs, go down the Chuck Norris route or at least John Claw Van Damme. If you have some self-respect, uh, but yeah, not, not, not Seagal. We don't, we don't watch Seagal in this household. Uh, the next one comes from, uh, in, no, did we answer this? Uh, just some geeky guy. What is the one opinion you have on a film that is so controversial that you would get beat up if you said it out loud? Controversial. Um, I have a few. I have a few. Uh, the first Godfather at this point in time is sort of boring to watch. I know, I know. Um... The only part of Full Metal Jacket you need to watch is the first act. Once they leave boot camp, you no longer need to watch the movie. Um, A Star is Born is fucking atrocious and boring, and I hate everyone in the movie. Um, Internal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, I can't stand. I, I hate... You know what it is when it comes to romance movies with two unlikable people that are completely wrong for each other, but the movie somehow tries to make you feel something for them or some kind of weird empathy? I don't. I just never have. I'm like, they're both awful people. I'm glad they broke up, and I hope they move on. And I don't want to watch them struggle with it because there's no reason to struggle. I was like, she, she wasn't worth it, Jim Carrey. Get on with your life. Um, those are a few controversial movie opinions. Uh, I'm sure I have more. Oh, I have another one. Um, I shared this one on Facebook a few weeks ago. Die Hard 3, I enjoy more than the first Die Hard. I just, I find it more enjoyable. I don't think the villain is better. Hans Gruber obviously is the, the best villain. But I do enjoy the, the buddy team-up vibe of Sam L. Jackson and... Um, Bruce Willis much more than just Bruce Willis by himself. And and to be honest with you, I I remember in the mid 90s when Die Hard with a Vengeance first came out, I think I had watched I think I've watched the first Die Hard maybe once at that point as a kid, but then I remember watching Die Hard with a Vengeance on repeat over and over again. I was like, "Wow, I just like this more." Technically speaking, do I think it's the better movie? No, I just always thought it was the more entertaining movie. So those are some controversial movie opinions. And as we uh, continue on, you guys, I have a question for you now. Share some of your most controversial movie opinions. Let me know those and I'll, I'll read through them in a second. Type them up now. All right, the next one comes from... Hector Rodriguez. Hey, John. What are your thoughts on... Skinamarink? Skinamarink? What is Skinamarink? Now I gotta look it up. I 
I did not see this actually. Skinna Marink is a 20. Am I saying that right? Skinna Marink? Uh, is a Canadian horror film written and directed by Kyle Edward in his directorial debut. Has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Came out January. It's coming out January 13th, 2023. So if it's coming out January 2023, how the fuck would I have seen it? Um, actually, yeah, no, I, it hasn't come out here yet. So I have, I have not seen it, man. I know nothing about it either. Wait, wait, it's got a hundred percent Rotten Tomato score, but it has a 5.4 in IMDb. Okay. Well, that sounds intriguing. Um, I don't know anything about it. The next one comes from KT. If John starred in Home Alone 2, credit card you got it. Yeah. Credit card. You got it. Uh, absolutely. That's how you should. Sometimes when I call people on the phone, I want to talk like that, but I just don't want them to hang up on me. So what I'm going to start doing is anytime I get a telemarketer call, I'm going to start talking like, like that credit card. You got it. The child. Um, what else does he say in that? Um, oh yeah. The father. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the next one comes from Carter Lovejoy. How's it going, Carter? And thank you for the generous super chat, man. Uh, what's a bad movie you would give to kids who have been naughty all year instead of a lump of coal? I'll start. The Last Airbender. Also, I love how YouTube is doing Xmas themed super chats. Is it? I didn't know it was doing Xmas themed super chats. I don't know what YouTube does anymore. I'm just a, I, I just I'm just on here, for now and forever. Um, I would probably, if I could, just in a weird way, I would I would give them all a copy of Morbius. You got to give everyone that has been naughty a copy of Morbius. That's that's my motto. Um, what's another really terrible movie? No, I think Morbius works. That's what you should give people. Because, like, they can't get mad at you either. It's like, maybe they thought you tried with it. But then it's just like, here's here's Morbius. Enjoy this shit. I remember when that movie first came out, some people said it was good. <laughs> They're like, this is good. I'm like, what's wrong with you? What? Who? Okay, let's go. So, okay, here's, here are some controversial movie opinions. Home Alone 3 is decent. I get where you're coming from, but it's not. It's it's really just a bastardized version of a great of of a concept that was good and then they made it into everything Home Alone 3 is what would have been Home Alone if like talented craftsmen had not handled the project. Then you'd get Home Alone 3. It was it was like here's Hollywood's bastardized version of Home Alone, like instantly forgettable, like regurgitated baby food that like seven year olds are going to like, but no one else. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Someone said Home Alone Three is the best one. I don't believe I don't believe you. All right. Let's keep going here. Uh, where am I? Sorry, guys. It's been a while. I forgot how to do this. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Oh, there it is. Okay. That makes life way easier. Scarlett Johansson was in Home Alone 3. Yes, she was. And then Max had chip chicken pox. Okay, the next one comes from... Ballooned Raccoon. Hey, John. I love the 10-year video. I've been watching the Mission Impossible movies. Just finished Rogue Nation. What's your favorite Mission Impossible movie? Well, thank you for watching the 10-year the long. Actually, so I'll be honest with you. That 10-year video was about a year too late. But 10 just sounded better than 11. Um, so, yeah, if you guys missed it, here on this channel, I did a, 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 a we did a 25-minute retrospective 
of the last decade of this channel, and there's been a lot of weird, creepy shit and phenomenal moments. I will just sum it up with it was a very magical, mystical video. And if you haven't watched that video, it kind of encapsulates the last 10 years on this channel. So uh, thanks to everyone who did watch it and commented. And uh, thanks for all the feedback. I hope you enjoy it. And um, it was a really good video. You know, um, I, I try to we try to use as good of music as we could that wasn't super copyrighted. Um, originally the first cut of that had way better musical scores in it, um, that I loved, but unfortunately copyright. And so anyway, uh, if you did see that video, thank you. If you haven't, it's the last video posted right here on this channel. As far as the mission impossible movies, I would say, um, I, I did always kind of like the first one, but I think ghost protocol might lend itself to the most rewatchability. And then I think Fallout aesthetically and as far as like the tone of it, Fallout might be my favorite, but I don't think it's the most rewatchable, if that makes any sense. Um, like some of the sequences in Fallout, like the bathroom fight, the skydiving, um, just like the helicopter sequences at the end of that movie, the chase se sequence on the on the rooftops where Tom Cruise broke his ankle. That was all awesome. Uh, Pro Ghost Protocol, though, still, I would say, has if not the best sequence, but the most memorable, it's when they're climbing up the, the Birch um, Khalifa Dubai Tower. And that still makes my palms sweaty when I watch. I remember watching that in IMAX for the first time, and I was like, ooh, shit, that's scary. Um, but yeah, I would say those are two of my favorites. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the new one. And speaking of which, I watched a, uh, a recent behind-the-scenes clip of the new Mission Impossible where I was watching, it was like five minutes long, and it was this motorcycle stunt where Tom Cruise, they built this huge ramp, and I was like, oh, this is the stunt. No, no, no. They did a stunt to test the stunt to do another bigger version of the stunt. And I was like, oh my God, Tom Cruise just, these Mission Impossible movies, these are just excuses for Tom Cruise to do crazy, wacky shit and have the studio pay for it. That's what these movies are. And I'm okay with that. Uh, but yeah, th those are two of my favorites. Uh, the next one's going to come from Gabe K. How's it going, Gabe? All right, here we go. I love my flicky picky. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> have you ever been to Alamo Draft House? Greatest theater experience of all time. No, I have not. I would like to. I know everything about it. I've just... I've never been. Um, I know they're only located in Texas unless they've expanded somewhere else that I, I don't know about. But yeah, that's how movie theater should be. You talk, you text, you get out, you get kicked out. You can't sit there and do that. That is, that's what the theater experience should be. But for some reason, it's not. Uh, people just treat it like it's their living room. And I hate all of them. But no, I haven't been to one. I, I wish I had. I wish I lived in a town that had one. It would be the only theater I ever attended. And uh, thanks for the question, Gabe. Uh, Jack Taylor says, Merry Christmas, John. Where does a Christmas story rank in your Christmas movie list? Any plans to see the sequel? I did watch the sequel a few weeks ago. And I liked some of it. I think it had some charm to it. It's nice that the original actor came back and some of the actors. I didn't like the new casting of the mom. Um, the story, I thought the concept was decent and they had a lot of callbacks to the original, but it, halfway through it, it just felt like it was really contrived. And um, there was like one sequence where all these like drunk people from a bar are going sledding down a hill. And it's just like kind of stupid. And I, I didn't like that. It took me out of the movie, and that was the halfway point. Um, I think my favorite cameo in the film, though, was uh, Scott. Uh, is it Farkas or Fargus? The the original bully in the first movie has a cameo in this one, and I thought his was like the best of the movie. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I could ever rewatch it again. It's definitely not going to have that timelessness to it. Like the original has, as far as a Christmas story goes on my, my Christmas movies of all time list. Oh, it's definitely in the top like three. It has to be maybe four. Uh, because for me, it's like home alone, one and two, uh, maybe like the Santa Claus or jingle all the way. And then maybe a Christmas story right in there somewhere. Um, but also like I consider hook a Christmas movie, so maybe I could, in a way, I mean, I could put Hook in the top, like, three Christmas movies as well. So, I don't know. It's in the top five. We'll go with that. Top five. 
and uh, Batman Returns might just be my top 10 somewhere in there, which I, I was debating if I wanted to do a special Christmas review this year. And if I do do one, I think I've, I'm going to do a review of Batman Returns. I've always had a weird fascination with the movie. I, I actually remember seeing it in theaters as a kid, which I had to have been only eight, nine, five years old when that came out, maybe. But I, re- I remember seeing it. Um, and it's just weird and dark and twisted. It's like the darkest Batman movie ever made with so many sexual into windows from the Joker and Catwoman. And let's not get it twisted. Keep in mind, the Penguin is the most underrated Batman villain put on screen of all time. Just a creepy circus freak who, like, kidnapped children. I really think about how dark and evil his character was. I don't think they've I don't think they've topped his character as far as, like, a villain goes. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's keep going here. Uh... Uh, Max Dugenbauer, Avatar 2 was amazing, almost as amazing as the first one. Best film of the decade so far. Avatar haters should be put on the naughty list. Um, I don't think he said it like that, but I did. Um, yeah, Avatar is what it is. It's a, it's a simple story that's entertaining, that's immersive, and it's something for all ages and all audiences where you can just go let go. You let, you go into it, you immerse, you let go. And then you come back to reality. Um, I don't think it's, uh, you know, it's it's not one of those thought-provoking films that's going to sit there and make you think about your life and question everything. You know, it's not going to have this amb- ambiguity, ambiguous conversation surround- surrounding it. You know, it's, it's not like Inception where you can debate what was real, what wasn't. Did this happen? What did this mean? What was this a metaphor for? No, no, no. It's giant fucking blue aliens riding whales and fighting bad people who want to kill, who want to kill big whales. That's what it is. And I'm okay with that. It did. My biggest complaint. though, watching it again, though, for a second time is, uh, it really did feel like the sequel movie. It felt like, like the first Avatar in many ways went bigger in scale and scope and story and location. And the second one was in a way very subdued. You know, they didn't go a lot of places. It was sort of like a battle that took place on a boat at the end of the movie. That was more or less what it was. And um, like, that's fine, but it, it really did feel like a stepping stone movie into the next installment. Uh, it was like, here's the battle. We're going to save the war for later. Uh, the next one comes from Michael Parton. Still haven't seen Avatar 2 because I had COVID. Well, get better soon, man. It'll always, it'll be there. Don't worry. You got time. Um, I'm sure the uh, it's going to be in theaters for a while. And even if it does leave theaters, they're going to re-release that shit three more times until the next one comes out. All right. And also, if it has any, um, if it's like the original Avatar was, they'll probably have it on um, Blu-ray by like uh, late March, early April, or who knows, maybe sooner at this point. But I remember the the, the last one was only, um, I remember it came out on like Earth Day on Blu-ray. And I remember that because I went and bought it. Jack Kaler says, Best and worst Christmas gifts you ever received. Thanks for everything. In 22, you demand. Well, you're demand too. Uh, best and worst Christmas gifts. I don't remember the worst Christmas gifts. I mean, I, I think I've gotten socks and stupid stuff here and there. Um, but socks are useful. I'm not going to lie. Uh, best Christmas gifts I can remember. As a kid, I remember getting like a Super Nintendo. Back in like, what was that, 92? 2 1992 and getting super Mario world with it. And just thinking this was the best thing that could ever happen. Like I, I thought I peaked and I, I didn't think life could get better. And I remember playing like super Mario world and thinking, Oh my God, this is like virtual reality. Like this is like another planet. I just arrived on <laughs> like to me, that game back in 1992 was like watching avatar today. It's like, that's how immersive it was to me. That's how I viewed it. Um, 
it wasn't side scrolling. No, no, no. Like when I was jumping on mushrooms and shit, I was like in my head jumping on mushrooms that are coincidentally come from shit. So, but yeah, I, that was, that was one of the best Christmas gifts I can remember ever getting. Um, yeah, we'll go with that one. All right. The next one comes from Jason Nelson. Hey, John thoughts on no more Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. I'm fine with that. After Wonder Woman 84, I was kind of done with it. I was okay with them casting someone else. I never thought she was the greatest choice as Wonder Woman. I thought she was good, and and she did sell me on her performance in the first movie, and she did have like a likability and sort of that fish out of water vibe really worked for her, and her even even her accent I think helped. Uh, differentiate the character a little bit uh, from what we're used to. But um, yeah, I I thought it was fine, but two movies were good. We got it. We're done. I'm okay with the entire DC reboot. I really am. A lot of things that they were doing weren't working. I think there are some things they could have made work. I think the biggest detriment to all of that was Henry Cavill not returning as Superman because the guy only got one movie. He clearly wanted to come back. He thought he was coming back. He looks like Superman. People wanted him to be Superman once again. And I just feel like there was somehow, some way they could have made that happen. I I don't know who you could cast to top him or who would be a superior actor to top him that would be a better version of Superman because I can't think of anyone. Uh, so yeah, I, everything else I was okay with. I think that was the one negative. And I think the other negative was we never really got a solo Ben Affleck Batman movie. Th- those two things are just the things I wish would have happened, but everything else, scrap it, flush it down a toilet. Don't give a shit. Uh, the next one comes from, oh, and by the way, speaking of that, I have a feeling had Black Adam been the success that they were hoping it would be. A lot of these changes might have been slightly different, but I feel like that was the final nail in the coffin. They're like, yeah, no one gives a shit about this. Let's start over. All right. The next one comes from Watchtower Studios. All time, Max Bench and Squad. Also, how are you? And Stuckman, I, we exist. I mean, he's alive. I'm alive. And we both live on planet Earth. <laughs> uh, All time, Max Bench and Squad. I think my best bench press was like 315. And something about bench pressing heavy always scared me because it's this is like you're literally picking up a metal bar that weighs 300 pounds and dropping it on your chest. Not to mention at first it starts over your face. And it, something about it always intimidated me. I always felt like I could do more than I actually always did. Uh, but I think that I tried 315 one day. I did it. And then I never tried it again. Do I feel like maybe I could have done more at my all time meathead peak? Maybe. Um, But yeah, I never put a lot of um, stock into like my bench press. I just, I never cared about the weight I was lifting either. I like, I just wanted a good workout. I worked out for the pump. I didn't care about the weight. I wanted to look like I could lift a thousand pounds. I didn't give a shit if I could. As far as squatting goes, I don't think I ever when it came to squatting, at least in my like later years in high school, I think 300 something I would squat. But, um, the last time I squatted was prob probably like 2017. And I think I put like 265 on to rep it out. And then I kept dropping the weight down just to get a good workout. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't like squats. I think they're dangerous. I think you can hurt yourself. I think, for what you get from the workout, it's not worth it when you can do eight other workouts that are better and safer that aren't going to compress your spinal cord or pinch your trapezius muscles as you do it. Because keep in mind, to do a good squat, it's not just putting the weight on your legs. You're also putting that weight on your shoulders, on your spine, and on the back of your neck. And if you just tweak one little thing, if you just move just a hair the wrong direction with your spine and it's not aligned, you're going to snap your shit. And it's just not worth it. So that's my opinion on squats. I know some people love them. I just was never a big fan. But then again, I haven't worked out my legs in five years. So who cares? Uh, the, ne- the next one comes from Seth Hall. And by the way, I'm about 23 minutes behind in your question. So I'm going to start talking faster. Hey, John, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Least favorite Christmas movie. 
Um, and you said Hallmark movies don't count. That's too easy of an answer. Damn it. Um, least favorite Christmas movie. Oh God. There's probably so many, there's so many bad Christmas movies. Like I'll be home for Christmas starring Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I don't know why I remember that, but that movie's a piece of shit. Uh, there's one for you. (laughs) That's my, that's my least favorite Christmas movie. I can kind of remember watching because most of the terrible ones, I just block them out of my memory. And I have not seen Violent Night yet with David Harbour. I want to see it at some point. Maybe I'll see it this Christmas break or something. Uh, And thanks for the question, man. Fire Knight says, thoughts on the DCU reboot? Love the channel. Yeah, thanks. Um, I talked about that more extensively on the last live show. If you look at the thumbnail and the title of the video, I talk all about it for 20 minutes. And I just talked about it for the last few minutes. I'm happy it's rebooting. Don't care. I'm happy with it. My only issue is I think they're sort of in a predicament or a pickle, if you will. And there's been rumors and speculations that they might keep Robert Pattinson's Batman for the time being. But I don't, I have a theory that they don't actually want to keep his version of Batman to interact with the the rest of the Justice League at some point. I think his Batman is way too neutered and, and he's almost too realistic to fit in with someone like Green Lantern. I don't know what Robert Pattinson's Batman would do beside this, this version of the Justice League going forward, unless they're all grounded version of the Justice League, who knows, but I think right now they're going to at least make another sequel of Matt Reeves' Batman or maybe a third installment and then wait until the last possible second once that's concluded and then give us a new Batman for the new ongoing DCEU that can coexist alongside bigger than life characters like Aquaman, Wonder Woman, The Flash. I think they'll wait to introduce Batman last in this new version of the DCEU. That would be my theory. Um, I, because I feel like they at least need to make a few more Matt Reeves, Batman movies and milk that for what they can. And then start over with Batman again. That's what I would do. Um, and uh, my theory is behind that is also, if you look at HBO max and how many spinoff shows they have based on this version of Robert Pattinson's Batman and this version of Gotham, especially with like the penguin show they're going to have, with uh, Colin Farrell, I I feel like they have so many things in the works that revolve around this gritty, down-to-earth version of Gotham City that that's why they want to at least get everything they can out of it uh, until everything's concluded. So, all right, the next one comes from Gilliam, Gilliam LaBelle. Here we go. Watch The Whale tonight. Just give Fraser the damn Oscar already. Such a great performance. I legit cried three times during the film. So powerful. Absolutely. I uh, So I'm not going to say how. I'm not going to say why. But I do have the ability to watch The Whale um, in my living room. And no, it's not like a, a, a ripped off cam version of, from a movie theater. Um, so, yeah, I am going to watch that probably tonight or tomorrow. And I definitely will talk about it uh, in the next day or two. I'm looking forward to, it. I've been sort of savoring the flavor. I, I, I've, I've been waiting to see this movie for a while because I, I love a depressing movie. I love it. I don't know why. I just, I, I enjoy that experience. Carter Lovejoy. Here we go. And uh, thanks for the super chats guys. And thanks Carter. All right, here we go. Warner Bros. is re-releasing a lot of titles on 4K Blu-ray in 2023 in honor of their 100th anniversary. What are some titles from Warner Brothers you'd like to see on 4K? Point Break 1991 needs a 4K and is a Warner Brothers title. Yes, it does. And I would love if that happened. Hopefully it does. I'm not sure which titles they are releasing next year. I have no clue. And there's only a handful of movies I would, I'm, I'm trying to think of that. I want to see on 4k. And, uh, like I've said it once, I'll say it again. Nightcrawler, put that shit in 4k, please. Uh, but point break would also be in the running for another title. I would love to see on 4k. Um, let's see, like, um, I don't think like the movie, the warriors, does that have a 4k? I know they just re-released like a Blu-ray version of it, but I don't think it has a 4k. That would be great. Um, 
I'm trying to think everything else I like I want is on 4K right now. There might be a few other titles I would like to see, but nothing's coming to mind. But yeah, Point Break, that's that's the one I would go with. And thanks for the question, man. Uh, oh, better Zaga says, I can't wait for Avatar 3 Tokyo Drift. That would be awesome. Yes, please. Uh, except they don't drift in cars. They drift on whales. Stupid. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I, at one point, the rumor the rumor is right now, if we get to the fifth installment of Avatar, the story is supposed to take place on Earth. And the rumor is it's supposed to be utterly insane. I don't know what they do. Maybe the Navi invade Earth and blow it up. Our people leave Earth and then live in peace and harmony on Pandora. And that's the message of the movie. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, if, if, if you watched Avatar 2, humanity is coming back to Pandora. So that, that'll be one of the big plot points going forward at some point. Uh, Mr. Oak, Oakle246 says, Hey, John, thoughts on the Universal Lawsuit. What is the universal lawsuit? I, I haven't heard any new lawsuits about universal. Is it the one where I've heard one that uh, they put like an actress in a trailer of a movie and she wasn't in the movie or something that was like two people were mad. I, I don't know what the actual big lawsuit is. Maybe I do. Someone refresh my brain. Okay, the next one comes from Night King 01. I was like 12 when I saw Under Siege, and even then I was like, he's out of place. Yeah, Steven Seagal, he just, he runs like an eight-year-old girl. If that eight-year-old girl was, uh, couldn't move her arms or knees. Like, he just, he just, he runs like this. It's, it's, a, it's a bizarre phenomenon. Anyway, he runs like a Barbie doll. There you go. Uh, it looks like he gains 15 pounds throughout the film. I don't actually like him, by the way. Just watched it for laughs. Okay, if you watch it for laughs, I can respect that. Well, yeah. You know who I want to play Batman? Steven Seagal. Yeah, the Anna de Armas. Uh, yeah, I did hear about that lawsuit. Okay, yeah, that's. I think I'm referring to the same lawsuit. Where they promoted her in the movie and she wasn't in it. Right, yeah. Oh well, who cares? I'm gonna sue let's all you guys wanna sue them together? I'll tell you this about Universal Studios, and if they're watching, I love you guys, you're awesome. Keep doing whatever you do. But now, um they put copyright claims on every single review I've ever reviewed of a Universal movie. I remember at one point, years and years ago, I talked about the Jurassic World trailer, and I literally showed a picture, a frame of the trailer, and they gave me a copyright for it, a copyright claim. And then I disputed it, and they said, no, 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 fuck you. Here's another one. So you know what? I hope they get sued for it. And, you know, we should all sue them for it because I, I don't know about you, but I was offended that they, they made a false claim. She was in the movie and, and she wasn't. So I think we should all get together and all file separate lawsuits because if they're going to falsely give me copyright claims on YouTube, well, then I'll just give them a, a really dumb lawsuit. There you go. But then again, who knows? They're a billion dollar studio uh, and um, I'm sure nothing will come from it. Or maybe they'll settle out of court for a really nice settlement. Uh, Universal released Nightcrawler 4. Is Nightcrawler Universal? I thought it was... I thought that was Lionsgate. Or, I, I could be wrong. Okay, the next one comes from... Kinda... Kinda Grump. Favorite movie related to food, not Ratatouille. Uh, Chef, the John Favreau movie, Chef, with Scarlett Johansson. I remember watching that, and I it made me so hungry. I had to pause the movie and literally go get food. I think I got, like, Subway or something, and came back to watch the rest of the movie. I, I was like, damn you, movie. You made me so hungry. Uh, that's one of them. Also, uh, this one's sort of a loosey-goosey one, but every time since I was a kid, a stupid little kid, whenever I watch the scene in Hook where the Lost Boys are sitting around and they're about to eat their imaginary food and then they imagine it being real food. 
I always wanted the blue shit that they were eating, the blue goopy stuff with a little bit of yellow drizzle in it. I always wanted to eat it, still do to this day. I wish I knew what it was. I'm sure it was just like gelatin with blue food coloring in it or so it was, it was probably toothpaste who knows but i always wanted to eat it uh, mr 47 says the menu was really good too yeah you know i saw the menu a few weeks ago and the weird thing about it is i really did enjoy it i the food did look appealing in the movie uh, especially the marshmallows at the end of the movie if you've seen it um it was good, but I sort of forgot I watched it two days later. <laughs> like I was like, I, I liked it, but I was like, oh, yeah, I saw that movie. I forgot. And I think at this point it could make my top 10 of the year. Uh, but I did enjoy it. You guys should watch the menu. It's a, it's a good mystery movie. It's a, it's a good time. And I, I think it would be really successful uh, once it hits streaming. Um, I will say if you, if you want like a, a good mystery film of the year, it's, it's way better than... Um, uh, knives out too. I will say that. Uh, the next one comes from Elliot Cecil. Christmas shopping is easily the most stressful, stressful thing. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I got most, most people this year, just gift cards, just go to Costco, buy some gift cards and, uh, call it a day, you know, stop buying people shit that they don't want and don't need. Everyone could use a gift card. You know, that's, that's my motto. It really shows that you care. So useful, you know? Uh, I was, And I actually just was Christmas shopping today. Uh, the next one comes from... Born Again. Rocky quoting Bill Paxton's Hudson from Aliens. Make it happen, John. Um, okay, so let me do the Bill Paxton version of it first. Well, fuck, man! So now we got to do Stallone's version of it. Yeah, no, yeah, oh, fuck, man. I, I, no, I can't do it. I, I, you got to stick with Bill Paxton only. All right, the next one comes from... Sorry for that. That's all I had. Uh, Big Tony Rocket says, John, how much would it take for you to go south on Pigeon Lady for one full hour? Merry Christmas. Just pay me with two turtle dubs. That's all I require. I'm kidding. Now... Since you mentioned the pigeon lady, we have to talk about the pigeon lady. And I, I, I'm sorry if you've heard this rant before, but let me tell you the most terrifying thing ever that relates to a Christmas movie. And it's the pigeon lady. Utterly disgusting. Every time I see her on screen, I can't eat. She's covered in bird shit. Sure, she's a copy and paste character from, from the first Home Alone movie. But there's just something about her that's always just rubbed me the wrong way. She can't even help herself. Like, take a bath. You know, do something. Why don't you get a job, huh? Why don't you go get a job? But the thing I really enjoy most at the end of the, at the, end of the film, where it's supposed to be a heartfelt, touching moment between Kevin McAllister and the pigeon lady out in the park on that cold Christmas day after Kevin comes down from his... His, his beautiful eight-room suite in the sky with thousands of presents and his family's all there and his dad has more money than he knows what to do with. And don't get me and don't get it wrong. Kevin McAllister loves to spend his dad's money and his credit cards. I mean, he maxed that shit out, didn't he? Did you see all the, all the desserts he ate in that hotel suite? He doesn't mind. But then he goes down and greets the pigeon lady on Christmas Day. And what does he give her? He doesn't give her a gift card to Starbucks. He doesn't invite her back to his hotel room to celebrate Christmas with his family and take a hot shower and give her some cocoa and hear some Christmas presents and a little bit of cash to send you on your way. <laughs> no, no, no. Kevin gives the pigeon lady some Christmas ornaments. Here you go. This will keep you warm when you live under the bridge covered in bird shit. But then again, I can't blame her. I wouldn't want her in my hotel room either. Could you imagine how dirty and disgusting that shower would be after she bathed in it? All that bird shit just clogging the drain. Utterly disgusting if you think about it. Anyway, that's my yearly rant on the pigeon lady from Home Alone 2. And let's continue on. Oh, God. I got I had to get that out. I'm sorry. Once a year, I gotta I gotta get that out. <sighs> Feels good. Feels good. All right. Uh, do you, and also, <laughs> and also, do you remember at the end of Home Alone 2 when the, when the sticky bandits were going to shoot her, 
Like literally, there, he was like, shoot her, shoot her. And he had a gun and he was trying to pull the trigger, but his hand was so sticky from the tar, he couldn't do it. They were going to shoot the pigeon lady. And I wish they would have. It would have been the best outcome. She had nowhere to go in life. She could have died a, a hero's ending. <laughs> uh, and then she then, then she could have just been bird food for her pigeons that she, she so loved. There you go. That would have been the ultimate ending for the pigeon lady. Whew, let's keep going. The next question is, Elliot Cecil says, would you say The Force Awakens is a Christmas movie because of the snow lightsaber fight? Probably not. That's like saying Vertical Limit is a Christmas movie because it has snow in it. So probably not. Not does it kind of feel like a holiday like event movie, sure. I mean like the Lord of the Rings movies. In my brain, I always like put them around a Christmas time vibe. I mean, they're not, they're, Frodo is not opening Christmas presents under a tree, but there is like a Christmas element to them because they are always typically released around the holiday season. So be sure. Why not? Uh, the next one comes from is the fable men's worth seeing. I have not seen the fable men's yet. I want to see it. And for some reason, I just haven't been able to, find the time to do it. And you know, the weird thing about the fable men's, which is the newest Steven Spielberg movie. No one's talking about that shit on the internet. No one, no one has talked about it. I've heard no references to it. No one has mentioned it. That's like the first time I've even seen anyone bring it up to me. Uh, so yeah, I do want to see it. Um, but I just haven't yet. Uh, then, <laughs> uh, the next one comes from, Uh, Stephanie Myers. How's it going, Stephanie? Hey, John, have you seen Violet Night? I have not seen it yet. I've been meaning to. I just haven't got around to it. Sometimes when it comes to like the Christmas movies that are always like crazy and violent and action packed, I, I kind of get this feeling that they're going to be sort of like a one and done type of movie. Like the, the, the niche or the shtick of it all, I think is going to wear thin very quickly for me. And I'll give you an example, like the Mel Gibson Fat Man movie that came out a year or two ago. And there's been multiple other ones like Krampus. Like all of these movies are fine, but I watched them once and I would never go back to revisit them. Now, I've heard Violent Night is good, but my question to you is if you've seen it, would you watch it again? But let's continue on with your question. Oh, here you go. You said it was pretty good, and I agree. Die Hard 3 is the more enjoyable movie in the franchise. Have a great Christmas. Well, thank you for that, Stephanie, and I will. Um, yeah, you too. I, yeah, I, like, if I'm going to watch, like, an action-esque, super hardcore Christmas time movie, I'd probably just watch the first Die Hard movie. But I will check out Violent Night at some point. Someone said it's better than Avatar 1. <laughs> um Yes, I would. It's fun. All right, Mr. 47. Good to know. Fat Man was okay. Yeah, Fat Man was kind of bad, actually. All right, the next one comes from Night King 01. My brother likes Hulk 2003. I don't know why. Doesn't he live in the same house as you? Just go ask him. Uh, actually, I demand you go do it right now. I think the Patriot is better than Braveheart. You know what? I actually... I don't love Braveheart. I never have. I think it's good, but I would rather watch Mel Gibson fight the Revolutionary War as as an as a American man than a Scottish man. Um, so take that how you will. But I do agree. I, I enjoy the Patriot more, way more. Uh, they're the same overdramatic, ridiculous plot, but I hate Braveheart. I don't hate Braveheart. I I like it. I just for me, the Patriot just has more to it. Um, I just enjoy it. And it is sort of like a copy and paste of Braveheart in many ways. And then again, Avatar 2 is sort of a copy and paste of the Patriot in some ways. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I've always liked the Patriot. I actually would say that's in, in my top 20 movies of all time. I know that sounds crazy, um, but it really is. I think it's an overlooked movie in many ways. I truly think it's underrated. 
Kyle says he called the sheet poop. Name that movie, John. Oh, I don't know. We'll just go with a little something called Billy Madison, 1995. He called the sheet poop. Yes, Miss Ver- yes, Veronica. Uh, Elliot Cecil says just saw Touch of Evil, phenomenal noir film. I haven't seen it yet. I've heard good things about it. Uh, but I'm all for like a good noir film, man. Um, well, good to hear. I'll check it out. T600 Tiny Todd says, Merry Christmas, John. Trees and stuff. Well, Merry Christmas to you. Trees and stuff are movies and more. Uh, thanks for that. And by the way, I hung my flick pick sign back there. Ah, ah. Let me get my stupid face out here. It'll focus. It'll focus. Okay, I lied. It won't focus. But I hung my flick pick logo back there. And I do want to do a uh, YouTube studio tour at some point. So, uh, Crypto Midnight says, I know you have a soft spot in your heart for Robin Hood and Waterworld. No, no, no. Not only do I have a soft spot, that's, you know what? Earlier we talked about 4K movies that need to exist. Robin Hood, Prince of Fucking Thieves, baby, which I think, is that a Warner Brothers movie? Or was that a Touchstone movie? I don't remember. Or was it a... Uh, I forget the company, the production company. Anyway, yes. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves on 4K. That's the movie I want to see hit 4K. And that is in my top 20 movies of all time. I mean that. Uh, so, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves and Waterworld. So, I was wondering if you had seen The Postman. I did watch The, the Postman once and the concept sounds phenomenal. And I have a buddy who loved the book and he's like, dude, it like the book is everything you would ever want to read when it comes to like a post-apocalyptic setting. But he's like, the movie is trash. And I watched the movie and it is trash. It's terrible. But continuing, continuing on with your question, Kevin Costner is a con man in the post-apocalyptic America. What's not to love? Yeah. Great concept, but the execution was junk and I vaguely remember it. It's been a long time. Maybe I should go back and revisit it. But I just remember just feeling like a made-for-TV movie when it shouldn't have. And what was with Kevin Costner, man? Like, he had big dreams for, like, big blockbuster movies that just never really panned out. Like, Waterworld, flop. The Postman, flop. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, it did okay. But no one really likes it, except for maybe me. (laughs) So, yeah, uh, Kevin Costner. Okay, the next one comes from, and thanks for the question, man. Very, very generous. Thank you. Uh, JT Vela says, hey, John, what's your favorite shot from the Batman? My favorite shot from the Batman, well, I really enjoy the opening scene where he's giving his monologue and his speech, and then he's he slowly walks out of the shadows for the first time. I really like that. I, I think that was a great introduction to the character, um, which I, I enjoyed very much. I also enjoy the shot of him in the interrogation room. Then he escapes Gotham City, uh, the Gotham City Police Department, and the shot where he jumps off the top of the uh, GPD building where he opens up his, his wingsuit. That's a phenomenal. And I like the fear in his eyes when he first does it, because keep in mind, this is like year two Batman. He hasn't jumped off of anything this high yet that we know of. So he actually is like a little bit reluctant, reluctant to do it for the first time. And I thought that was phenomenal. Um, the only shot in that sequence, I don't like when he jumps off of the building and he's like a uh, wingsuit gliding through the streets of Gotham city is, the GoPro wide angle lens shot of his head. <laughs> it just, it looks like, uh, it looks like this. Like it looks weird. Sorry for that. Um, it just looks really, it looks unintentionally funny. Uh, but yeah, those are a few of my, a few of my favorite shots. Uh, the next one, uh, you had more question here. Okay. Also, my controversial opinion is that the matrix reloaded is way underrated. I hate those movies. I hate the matrix sequels. All of them. I actually think they got progressively worse as they continued on with matrix kill my erection being one of the worst sequels ever made, but I'm glad you enjoy it, man. Uh, still has some of the best fight scenes I've ever seen. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. Well, thanks you too, man. Um, yeah, I'm not going to crap on, on your movie here too much, but I will for just a second. <sighs> The Matrix sequel fight scenes don't 
look like people. They look like rubber people bending back and forth with no grounded believability to them. Like when people get punched in the sequels of the Matrix movies, I don't feel like a human being is being punched. I feel like there's no repercussions to these punches. I just feel like a rubber guy is bending back and forth. That's the best way I can describe those movies. It just instantly takes me out of it. Like the scene on the playground where like 8,000 Agent Smiths show up. It just gets, I. It, it's almost comical. It looks like a, a cartoon to me. Uh, Mike Spoon. How's it going, Mike Spoon? Hey, John. I'm finally here for a live. Well, thank you for that. Hope all is well. You're an inspiration, buddy. Random question, but what was your favorite pose to do in the mirror when you were at your peak in your gym days? Front double biceps. Could you demonstrate? JK, thanks, man. Just for you, Mike. Um, I always enjoyed anytime I could like showcase my traps something about traps were just like the alpha male muscle to me so if i could like do a a trap flex like that that was always my favorite but thank you for the question it's it's hard to really give you a real pose in the hoodie but i'll save that for my only fans um silo says what film would you recommend in the genre of survival horror films something like descent if you've seen that i have Oh, God, You're, I'm going to have to rack my brain here. Survival horror films. Oh, my God. I know there's got to be something right up, up on the top of my brain I'm not going to think of. Somebody help me out. Someone name some good survival horror films. Someone's going to say The Hunt, which I'm going to disagree with. Let's look it up. We got the ritual, 47 meters down, frozen, wrong turn, waiting on a good one here. Let's see. It happened, whatever that is. The Gray is a good one. The Gray could be, a, I think, not really a horror film, more of a thriller. Um, we got The Farm, Crawl. I mean, at one point, Jaws was kind of a survival horror film, if you really think about it, at the third act when they're on that boat. Uh, someone put Prey in here. I wouldn't consider that a horror film. Green Room, I actually really enjoyed. That would be an okay one. Let's see if you guys said anything. Uh, alien? Yeah, Alien, I guess. Technically, Yeah, Alien, for sure. I always just put Alien in, like, sci-fi. I don't... I know it's a horror film, but I always just think sci-fi. Uh, someone said Castaway. Not quite a horror film, but it could be if you looked at it with a different perspective, it kind of is a man losing his mind for five years on an island by himself. The Thing, Alien, yes. Dog Soldiers, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, I really enjoyed 10 Cloverfield Lane. That was a great concept. Something about being trapped in a bunker with John Goodman just in itself is terrifying. Predator. I don't consider Predator a horror film. I just don't. I, I just, it's an action movie to me. Survival action film. Mrs. Doubtfire. Now that's the winner. We're going to go with that. Mrs. Doubtfire. I mean, hell, Home Alone 2 is kind of a survival horror film. Think about it. Two dudes are trying to kill him the whole movie. He's trying to survive, doing whatever it takes. I'm going to go with that. Plus the pigeon lady. Nothing's more terrifying than that. Uh, fan of film says better film avatar or Titanic Titanic is the better film. It is, it, it is the better film, I think. Um, and I, I rewatch Titanic once every couple of years and I always enjoy it. It still holds up timeless in many ways. I love it. Plus it gives you the feels like when you watch avatar, you're like, Oh yeah, these are digital blue people. It's fun to watch. But when you watch Titanic, you're like, this was a real event where hundreds of people died. So it, it's got a, the real life tragedy pulls on the heartstrings a little bit. The rat party says thoughts on buying secondhand physical media. I've done it for years and years. I mean, I, I accumulated most of my collection from pawn shops. And if you know anything about pawn shops, that's where crackheads go to sell shit. Uh, so yeah, many of my Blu-rays were probably either stolen or 
pawned off by Kraken. <laughs> and I like that. I like that they all have their own personal backstory. Uh, so yeah, I'm all for secondhand physical media. And if uh, the thing about physical media is secondhand, it has almost no value to it or it's like one twentieth of its original value. So that is the way to go. If you, if you want to accumulate a large collection, go to secondhand media stores and buy as much as you can go to Facebook marketplace. There are people start selling tubs of movies for next to nothing. They're just happy to get rid of it. Uh, the next one comes from fan of film opinion on cats, the animal, not the movie. I don't like cats. Never have. I think they're annoying. They're, they're, they're just really annoying animals. I've never been a fan of cats. I've never really met a cat. I liked and the movie's, Pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, the next one comes from MKF30. Did you hear rumors Chucky and Megan may be a crossover? I did not hear a rumor of that. I did. I could see that making sense. It really would. So like Megan and Chuck, Chucky team up and then fall in love with each other. Yeah, I, I could see something like that happening. I, I, sure, why not? Uh, fan of film says your favorite error of being a YouTuber, man. I'll tell you back in like 2014, 2015, if it, it may be, honestly, 2014 and 2015, because the possibilities were endless. And the thing is you could make a video and you could almost predict it was going to do well. Like, right. Nowadays you make a video and it's just like, you throw it out there and you don't know there's the algorithm right now is not made for people to succeed that aren't already succeeding, you know? So that's the problem nowadays. Um, but back in like 2014, 2015, you could, you could, you could gain traction on YouTube. You could stand out. Um, it wasn't as saturated as, as it is now. And it was a beautiful time. You could go at your own leisure and, um, Every video I made did well and I miss it. I do miss those, that time period. It was, it was beautiful. And I think in a weird way, I discovered a lot of things that I've, I've still carried on to this day. Some of the stylistic things I do, or maybe the way I present on camera a little bit, but yeah, I remember just having a lot of fun back then on YouTube and it just, and I was a little bit younger and maybe just immature enough to try something different. Um, but yeah, I miss it. I miss it. Good times. Good times. But you know, the great thing is all those videos I made still exist. So I can always look back on them. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some shit I would never do again, but I'm glad I did it that one point in my life. But now would I do it? Probably not. Some of it's cringe inducing, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, 2014, 2015 was like the golden era on YouTube. And I I will say that's probably like the most success I ever accumulated in a short time period. But then again, I, it, every couple years is different on YouTube. You know, it's, there, there's been goods and bads, you know, really, I think the worst time period might've been, for me it was it was like 2018 2019 i just something about those two years on youtube just felt really off to me um there were some good times don't get me wrong some videos i enjoyed making but yeah it just i don't know it just it wasn't as fun for those those couple of years if anything I would say the last year or two are, are good. I, doing the live streams for me on YouTube was like a whole new breath of fresh air brought to it. Like if it wasn't for the live streams on YouTube, I was sort of like losing interest in it ever so slightly. I was like, this just isn't what I want anymore, but this brought it back and I like it. You know, I, I feel like I can strive on live streams. I like to communicate with you guys. I like to just be on the fly. And I think that's where I excel when it comes to YouTube. You know, uh, sometimes if you give me like too much time to, to make a video that's pre-recorded and edited, I overthink it to the point of exhaustion and it no longer becomes fun. But like live streams, I don't get to think if I fuck up, I just do it now. I do it in front of you and I have to live with it forever. And I'm okay with that. So I hope I answered the question. 
Uh, Fan of Film says, did you see the menu or Guardians Xmas special? I did see, I talked about the menu menu earlier. I really did enjoy it. Probably top 10 of the year. Um, I just, the weird thing about the movie is I forgot I saw it two days after I saw it. So not, it not it's not like a negative towards the movie. It's just something about it wasn't as memorable. Uh, the Christmas special of the Guardians of the Galaxy, it was okay. Like, I know I'm supposed to say, oh, it was awesome. It was a great Christmas special. And I, I guess in terms of a Christmas special, it was well done. I mean, they, they had some fun with it. Um, but I just was like, yeah, okay. And then I went on with my life. It's not something I would ever, ever, ever watch again. Uh, Faisal H says, Hey John, thoughts on these 2022 movies, the Fablemans. I did not see it yet. I want to bones and all. I have a, uh, a copy of it. I need to watch. I've heard good things. I'm going to watch it soon. I haven't seen it yet. Triangle of sadness. I have not seen it yet. Uh, Banshees of Inishering, I think I said that right. Inishering, is that is that right? I haven't seen it. After Sun, haven't seen it. Tar, haven't seen it. Close, haven't seen it. So funny thing is, a lot of those films were in limited release, and I never got a chance to check them out. But the good thing is, I think I have, I think I have four or five of those movies right now I can watch. And my goal over the next like three or four days is to watch them. That way I can figure out if I'm going to put them in my top of the top 10 of the year list. Um, So I'm going to get to them. I have them ready to go. I just haven't seen them yet. Uh, Phantom film says a Christmas story or home alone. Oh, home alone all day long. As far as rewatchability. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. Christmas story is some good stuff, but home alone to me just has more vitality in it. Uh, Yaman John says, rank Brian De Palma's films, Blowout, Carrie, Scar... Okay, so Blowout, I just recently seen once. It was good. I- I'm glad I saw it, but I don't know if it's a, like m- the rewatchable, most rewatchable films. Uh, Carrie, I was never a big fan of Carrie. Just never was. Uh, Scarface Love. I love Scarface. That movie is a time capsule. Al Pacino as Scarface. Phenomenal. Fly, pluck, and fly. Hey, Ma. Hey, Ma. Her womb is so blue, she can't have a little baby, Ma. Come on. Uh, terrible, terrible accent. But anyway, uh, I love it. Untouchables is good. Um, Carlito's Way, I've seen like two or three times. Mission Impossible did a r- really good job on the first one. But I, like I said, I think I enjoyed it once I got into like Ghost Protocol phase. Uh, so for me, Scarface is number one out of all of those movies. Uh, Balloon Raccoon says... John, I am in love with Rebecca Ferguson. Do you think I have a chance? Well, no, but that's okay. You can enjoy her from a distance. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, man, go for it. Just don't get too close because they're going to call the cops. All right. The next one comes from uh, Big Tony Rockets. Could you see Cena replace Arnie? As the Terminator. No, because the thing about Cena or someone like The Rock being in a Terminator movie, at this point in time, they're just known as who they are as celebrities. They have such like a, a meme ability about them. So it's hard to like put them as either like The Rock could have been in the in a Terminator movie 10 or 15 years ago, and it would have been okay. Now he is just The Rock. And that's how I feel about John Cena. There almost there almost has to be a comedic element to whatever character they're playing, because I feel like we can't really take them serious anymore. Collie Wally says, happy holidays, John, you know, any good Christmas horror movies. Also, it's awesome seeing you and Austin videos together. Hope you have a good one. Well, thanks for that. Uh, Christmas horror films. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a genre I've never loved. It's Christmas horror movies. I, I know, I know. Sorry, I just, I don't like combining the two things. They just, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I know someone could say, oh, I like Krampus, but I didn't. I didn't like Krampus. You know, I don't, I'm trying to, I'd be hard pressed to pick a Christmas horror film that I thought was really, really good. And I, if there's one that exists, please let me know in the comments. Please let me know. But I don't have one. 
Uh, and yeah, it's fun meeting up with Austin. We always like every time we meet Austin, who if you don't know who Austin is, he has a YouTube channel, Austin Burke, um, who talks about movies. Uh, every time we go see a screening together, it's like afterwards we talk for like an hour and a half. So it's it's always a good time. Uh, so Black Christmas, yeah, I know. Black Christmas, though, it's like, do you really think it's a good movie? Or is it just like the best horror Christmas movie you, you could come up with? All right, the next one says, uh, or the next the next one, <laughs> guy from King's Highway. I had to cut off a friend for being too negative. Every time we'd walk out of a movie, he'd just be like, Meh, that sucked, even if it was great. You know, I I don't know. Sometimes people can't handle cynicism very well. Now, if your friend actually justified his opinions and could construct his thoughts in a way to where, like, he explained why and what worked and what didn't work, what he liked and what he didn't like, okay, I can live with that. But if he just went, meh, that sucked. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of boring if you can't have a conversation. But then again, in all fairness, like as a guy who makes YouTube videos talking about movies, I've been told I'm too negative sometimes or I'm too picky or too cynical. And um, so maybe in a weird way, I understand where your buddy's coming from, but he just can't vocalize why the movie was bad. Or maybe he's just trying to be edgy and cool. I don't know what it is. Um. The next one comes from Big Tony Rockets. Prince of Thieves is on 4K. I got it this week. It's, no, it's, it's Prince of Thieves on 4K. I don't believe you. I'm checking this right now. Prince of Thieves. What the fuck? Oh, it is. Yeah, Arrow. Didn't Arrow Video put this out? Why do I remember this? This is only in the UK, isn't it? I, I limited a release. UK, yeah, okay. I don't think this is in the US yet, though. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it's an, a UK. So you must be located in the UK. I'm sure I could order this. Is it region free? I'm only seeing UK versions of it right now. I got to get this shit. Okay. It's out of stock. Okay. Maybe Santa Claus will bring it to me anyway. Yeah. I, 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 now that you said that, I remember getting like a, uh, an email about that a long time ago. Um, I need to get that. I need that. Is it region free? Let me know. I'm sure I can look it up myself, but I just want you to tell me. <laughs> well, thanks for the info. How does it look on 4k? Does it look good? Uh, the next one comes from Age of the Keyboard Warrior. Violent Night sucks. Even drunk, it sucks. Merry Christmas. Is it overrated? Is everyone saying it's just cool because it's the cool thing to say? Uh, I'm, I'm going to check it out at some point. It is region free. Okay. All 4Ks are region free? Really? I guess you're right. Yeah, I never met. I never seen a locked Blu-ray, huh? Or 4K Blu-ray. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to get that. I, I need it now. I'm gonna have to get it. I'm gonna buy Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. There, there, there we go. All right. Guy from Kings Highway says. So yeah. Monday roll up and the uh, ganja. I don't know what that means, man, but thanks for telling me. Uh, Yeaman John says late sixties counterculture films like cool hand, Luke, the wild bunch, dirty, Harry. They don't make movies like that anymore. Oh no. Those are, those are two. You could never make a movie like dirty, Harry anymore. No, 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 no. The sequence where he holds a gun and says, well, do you feel lucky? Huh, punk? Do ya? You think you can make that scene nowadays? Absolutely not. Um, but yeah, I, I love them. I, I wish they'd make more movies like that, but they just can't, and they simply won't. 
Ganja is weed. So, I, sorry, I didn't know that. How dare I not know that? I'm not a drug dealer. Why would I know that? <laughs> but I did I did buy some gummies today, not going to lie. All right. I'm not a drug dealer. I just, I'm a purchaser. I'm a consumer. <laughs> All right, the next one comes from... Here we go. Guy from Kings Highway says, who would you see if you were visited by three ghosts of Christmas? Who, what do you mean? Who... Who would I see? What do you What do you mean? Who would I see? I mean, I'm gonna see my past, future, and present, aren't I? I don't know what you mean. Who would I see? Can you elaborate on that question? I just see me as a bitter old man looking like Clint Eastwood, telling people to get off my lawn. That's what I would see in the future. And it would be a beautiful thing. I'd be like, yeah, that's where I want to be. Is Robin Hood Prince of Thieves worth watching? Is Oxygen worth breathing? Yes, it's fucking phenomenal, man. I love Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. It's going to start off a little bit hokey and corny. Like, you're going to be like, oh, man. But once once they get out of the dungeons and they go back to uh, England... It really picks up. And when you get the the vibe and the, the camaraderie between Morgan Freeman and Kevin Costner, who's not even doing an English accent, it, it's a great fun. Adv- oh, and no, when they get to when the, when they get to the forest and they start building forts in the trees, if you're not having a good time watching that, then I don't know what to tell you. Yes, it's worth watching. Okay, the next one comes from Guy from King's Highway. Screw it. Another super chat. Well, thanks, man. Thank you for that. Uh, You're a great YouTuber, and you seem like a decent guy. (laughs) I like how I'm a great YouTuber, but I'm just a decent guy. But let's continue on here. The only weird thing is you move a lot, but that's okay. No, no, no. Let me tell you something about moving a lot. In the animal species, intelligent creatures move a lot. Because moving is life. Moving is living, right? Staying stagnant way too long means instant death is upon you. And I've always had this instinct inside of me to keep moving because I always knew what worked and what didn't work for me in life. So I kept moving and searching searching for what would work best. And also, I'd like to add to this, that moving around so many times in my 20s in many ways, it helped make me a better, well-rounded individual. So in, in some ways, I like to think I lived like three or four different lifestyles all before I got into my mid-30s, which is a really good thing when it comes to like well-roundedness. And uh, I learned what worked and what didn't. And then I, I figured out what to search for. And then I found it. That way, I don't live the rest of my life in misery I'll live in peace and happiness. So moving around is the best thing you can ever do. If you can do it, do it. It's my recommendation to you. It's what you should do. So yes, I'm glad you brought that up. And I'm glad I could give you some insights to why I did what I did. I got to stay somewhere and stagnant and miserable. No way, man. You got to escape that shit. Like a, yeah, someone said like a caged panther. Yeah, I want to hunt. John is low key Patrick Bateman. I relate to that character quite a bit. We'll just leave it there. Okay, the next one comes from a uh, guy from Kings Highway. Once again, everyone here should give a homeless person $20 this holiday. If we all do it, many will eat and live to tell the tale. That would be great, but many homeless people also are, are drug addicts and alcohol alcoholics, and they they don't want help. I'm telling you, they don't. They a lot of people don't. Want, some people do. Those people, yes, you should help them. But a lot of people, they don't. They don't want it. That's the truth. That's the sad truth. I know, man. I know. If you ever see a homeless person, the best thing you can do is be like, "Hey, what do you want to eat? Go into the grocery store. Go into the restaurant. Buy it for him. Hand it to him." That's the best thing you can do. 
Uh, Michael Murphy says, been watching your channel since 2012. Keep up the great work. Merry Christmas, John. Well, thanks for that. And thanks for being around for the last 10 years. It doesn't mean a lot. And we're going into 2023 in just a few days. I don't even know what happened to 2022. I couldn't tell you. It's a scary thing. And, uh, 2023, it's, I'm okay. Listen, I thank you for the Christmas wishes and greetings, but I'm going to get weird and dark on you just for a second. And by the way, thanks to all 319 of you watching right now. And I'm sorry, you're going to have to hear what you're about to hear, but I have a theory that time is rapidly going faster. And I don't just mean psychologically speaking, something with the earth's gravitational pull or the rotation of the planet is going faster. Something is different than it was just a few years ago. The days are passing by quicker. And maybe I'm having an existential midlife crisis. I couldn't tell you. Maybe, maybe that's it. But something has happened. And I'm not quite sure what it is. But there's been this shift. And I don't know if you've noticed it too. But just think back to like two or three years ago. And compare that to now. Doesn't it feel so different than it did at one point and not for the better? Like it's not getting better. I'm not just talking about economics and and social things. I'm just talking about the overall vibe of life. Something is something is happening and I can't tell you what it is. I know I sound crazy right now, but we're on the brink of disaster. I feel it. In my loins. I feel it deep down in my loins. Just putting it out there. The world has tilted. Yes, it has. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. There's an asteroid on its way to Earth. And the government knows it. And they're not telling us about it. That's what they're hung. What they're doing is they're, they're keeping us in the shadows. And keeping us blinded. As they build large bunkers underground. So the rich and the elite can go live in them. I'm telling you right now, that is happening. I sense it. <sighs> World War Three, baby. You know the thing about World War Three? You don't need guns. You don't need ammo. You don't need nuclear weapons. You know what you need? It's all it's all social economics. It's all about money. Okay. That's that's the most powerful weapon you can you can be as a government. You don't need to drop a bomb in somebody. No, no, no. You make the country go broke. That's what you do. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going here before I jump into conspiracy theories. But Merry Christmas to everyone, too. Uh, the next one comes from Dr. Rockwell. Least watch Blu-ray on your collection. Probably G.I. Joe Cobra Commander. <laughs> I, I mean that. That's probably the truth. Uh, no one likes you. Gino says, Hey John, would you rather chill in a bunker playing board games with John Goodman, putting lotion on your skin with Buffalo bill or watch TV with Quentin Tarantino from dusk till dawn? Ooh, I'll probably pick the John Goodman one. I could hang out with John Goodman. Sure. Playing board game is watching that old TV with eight VHS movies down there. Sure. Buffalo Bill is going to want my skin at some point, and I just don't want to give it to him. Uh, someone said we need that asteroid to come quicker. I mean, if it's gonna, if we, if there's an impending doom, just get it over with. That's all I want. <laughs> um. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks for the uh, the question. No one likes Eugenio. Great name, by the way. Night King 01 says, I like Black Adam in the comics, but how did The Rock think he was going to be the face of the DCEU with this character? He's supposed to be a psychopath. Well, yeah, that's the problem. The Rock didn't understand that about the character, and The Rock has an ego, and The Rock wanted to be the face of DC, but not not the character he was playing. No, no, no. He wanted to be The Rock. I, hey, everyone, I'm The Rock. Look at me. I'm wearing a black spandex suit. I'm sort of an edgy hero, but I'm still a good guy. That that was the problem. That's why the movie failed. Had The Rock just really dedicated to what the character is and just been an evil anti-hero or whatever you want to make him, just completely batshit crazy, maybe they made the movie rated R and just pushed the limits of what it could be, 
then it would have stood out. And people would have been like, ooh, The Rock's doing something different. But no, The Rock's just being the typical good guy he always is. And it really showed in Black Adam. I think that's like the last straw for The Rock for me. I don't really want to see him in anything else. Um, so yeah, th- I, I, that was the nail that killed DC's current cinematic universe, in my opinion. The next one comes from That Movie Geek. Hey, John, Merry Christmas. What is your favorite? Who is your favorite director? It really depends. Like for me, whenever I see like a James Cameron movie, I get excited because I know I'm going to get a blockbuster of epic proportions. But whenever Quentin Tarantino is attached to a movie, I know I'm going to get like this really immersive, well-written movie. I know I'm going to want to rewatch 20 times. So those are two of my favorite directors working today. Uh, I, I would probably lean towards Tarantino a little bit more because I get more excited when it comes to a Tarantino movie because when it comes to camera now, you know, like or hate Avatar or whatever, I like it. But it's like I wish he was sort of doing something else at this point. It's like I, I get it, man. I get I get Avatar. I understand. I just wrap wrap it up in the next movie. I don't think we need more. Uh, and you go on to say mine is Kubrick and I think the shining in 2001 are masterpieces. They are also, I love clockwork orange and eyes wide shut is also one weird movie. Yeah. Eyes wide shut. I watched one time and I don't think I would ever revisit it, uh, again. That's the thing about Kubrick movies. A lot of them, a lot of his films have like acts in the movie. I like like the first act or the second act or the third act. But a lot of his movies as a whole, I, I don't find a lot of them rewatchable. Like 2001 A Space Odyssey, beautiful movie. You should watch it at least once. But you're not really going to want to go back and revisit it over and over again. You know, that's how I feel about a lot of his films. Uh, Joey Ruiz, Lord of the Rings, says, Can you rank the Clerk movies? Also, did you like Tusk? I thought Tusk was okay, but definitely not not a movie you need to revisit. Uh, the clerks movies, the first one, then the second one and the third one. That's how I would rank them. Um, I like me some Kevin Smith, but let's put it this way. The movies that I love of Kevin Smith, I love and everything else is just like, eh. like the first two clerks movies. Phenomenal. Mall rats really enjoy. Um, Chasing Amy's okay. I, but that's really it. I don't, everything else that he's made, I'm just like, it, it's okay. Andy Sanchez says, John, I like watching your live streams. I also rewatch your live streams in audio form like the podcast. I'm either working or doing errands. Well, thanks for that, man. And that's, and that's fine. If you just want to listen to my, my stupid voice rather than look at my stupid face as well. I'll take that as well, man. These are more or less made to be podcasts. I mean, these are visual podcasts. Uh, and at one point, I will eventually make these podcasts audio only only uh, live shows at some point. I might edit them to to tweak them or maybe leave like the really interesting questions in the podcast version, audio version of them. Or maybe I'll just leave them unedited. unedited. I'm not quite sure. Um, but that that's my plan. But thanks for that, man. Uh, Syrup, Syrup Sailor. That's a great name. Green Arrow, Oliver Queen movie to launch new DCU. Um, I don't know if Green Arrow is a big enough name or character to launch the the new DC. Um, I, 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 I think he could be a secondary character at some point. But to launch it, I don't know about that. I, I think you need a bigger character to start off with. You need to get everyone's attention. I mean, let's face it. I mean, I was going to make a joke about Hawkeye, but it's okay. We just won't. <laughs> uh, all right. The next one comes from Mona who says, John, can you picture yourself being a YouTuber at age 50? Or what sort of, what sort of content could you see yourself doing at that age? I think you could be cool to to see a live flick trip. A live flick trip would be kind of hard to do because I got to drive, stream it. I I could do a live flick trip like in a store, 
but it might not be the most entertaining thing on the planet. I will say, I think edited flick trips actually lend themselves to be better videos. Could I be doing this at 50? Sure. I mean, the thing is YouTube gets bigger and bigger every year and movies are always probably going to exist. I'm always going to watch movies. And I think as I get older, maybe my audience will mature and get older with me. So, I mean, I could always talk about movies. I mean, there's movie critics that exist who are 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. Um, so yeah, I, I think the possibilities could go into my fifties. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at some point, all your favorite YouTubers that you watch today are going to age and I'm, you're going to watch a lot of YouTubers who you watch now in their fifties or sixties. If YouTube, if YouTube stays around also, you know, there's a lot of other things I enjoy in life that I would like to talk about or make videos about one day at some point that don't relate to movies whatsoever. And that's on the back burner. You know, if the movie thing dwindles and fizzles at some point, there's other things I can do on YouTube that aren't necessarily movie related. And it's probably shit you guys wouldn't even care about. Some of you might, some of you might not, but there's other things I, other interests and other hobbies I could explore when it comes to YouTube. Absolutely. And plus, you know, the thing is talking about movie. I, and going back to movies, I, I enjoy movies. I do. I enjoy talking about them. Maybe I could at one point in life really dive into the podcast um, genre and, and, and do that. I don't know, but I, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So you guys can look at my old ass one day. That'll be fine. I'll just be wearing diapers. <sighs> The next one comes from Zepsi Cinema. Do you agree Chris Nolan is the biggest badass in cinema and is the king? Please agree for the sake. Also, was Uncle Gary ever real? Love you, dear. Thank you for that. Uh, Uncle Gary, yes, more or less was real. I just, I have an uncle. His name wasn't Gary, but more or less everything I'm saying is a version of things he did. Yes, Uncle Gary in many ways is real. So don't feel cheated when I mention Uncle Gary. Uh, Chris Nolan, yeah, he's a great filmmaker. I think he's gotten a little self-indulgent in his last few attempts of making movies. <laughs> Tenet. Uh, but I am looking forward to Oppenheimer. I'm hoping it's a return to form. And if anything, like or hate Chris Nolan, I, I like him. I'm hoping I just like the next movie he makes more than his last few the man pushes the limits of, of cinema and technology and he believes in practicality and he believes in film. Like he actually shoots movies on film, which only a few directors are still doing to this day. And that's what makes him great. And that's why no matter what, I will always have a special place in my heart for Christopher Nolan and I will support whatever he's doing. It doesn't mean I have to like it, but I'll support it. The next one comes from Seth Hall. What are your favorite slash least favorite impressions to do. I, I I mean, at this point, I think they're all getting worse. Uh, every time I do them, they're, they're subsequently getting worse. Um, my least favorite to do. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think they're all fucking. I, the only one I enjoy doing is Morgan Freeman. I'll be honest with you. Um, the first, okay. And also as far as controversial opinions go, the first diehard is the only diehard I haven't seen. That's utterly insane, man. You need to go watch that now. You get you just spend two hours of your life and go watch it. Uh, thanks for the question. Lou says, I promise you Blue Velvet is David Lynch's best movie. It's Dennis Hopper's best role. I've heard that many times and I'm it's still on my to-do list. It's the one movie of like classic cinema that I still have not watched that I need to. So, yes, I will watch Blue Velvet at some point very soon. And thank you for that. Uh, Helicopter Kick says, John, you're such a stud muffin. Well, th thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> I need to figure out a couple of movie posters to buy. I've got Cobra, Tombstone, Back to the Future, and RoboCop. So let me tell you something when it comes to... And by the way, thanks to all 344 of you beautiful, magical people watching right now. Um, when it comes to movie posters, I'm a weirdo, okay? So I have... There's a certain vibe and style of movie poster I really enjoy. 
Um, these are movie posters. These are art I want to frame on my wall. So I don't like movie posters with floating heads and stupid shit like that. And also, there's a lot of movies I love, but I don't love their movie poster. And I'll give you a prime example. Jurassic Park. I love Jurassic Park. Some people like the poster, and I think it's a good teaser poster, but the poster itself is just the logo. And I don't want that on my wall. It's it's not that in, interesting to look at. And we actually were just going through this this predicament when I was picking out posters for our theater room. And um, I like illustrative looking posters. I like movie posters from the 1970s and 1980s. Like typically speaking, there's just a visual that I enjoy about those. They they look artistic. They're illustrated. They don't just look like photoshopped heads on people floating around. Um, there's they they look like art to me. Like the Jaws movie poster. The symmetry in that just looks beautiful. It has the logo, it has the graphic, it has the representation of what the movie's about. It encapsulates the movie perfectly. I love it. Uh, the original Star Wars poster looks phenomenal. That's why it's in my theater room right now. The Back to the Future poster, I think out of all the posters you mentioned, would be in the top there. RoboCop has a pretty good poster too. So yeah, when it comes to movie posters, it's it's really... It's, it's so subjective, you know, there's, I've seen people that love certain posters that I hate, but I don't necessarily hate the movie. I just hate the poster. So that's always been my biggest predicament in life. Like there's so many movies I love, but I wish it had a better movie poster. It's, I know it's weird, right? Um, so yeah, in here, in my, in my office or studio, uh, I, I'm going to hang a few movie posters. Like I think I'm going to hang, um, My Nightcrawler poster in here. I have a Taxi Driver poster. Oh, the Taxi Driver poster from the 1970s. I really enjoy. Um, Like the Warriors movie poster. The original 1970s Warrior. Um, Warriors has a really good movie poster. Uh, Someone said the original Star Trek has a really good illustrated movie poster. Okay. Um, Child's Play 2 poster is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I just don't love the movie enough to hang it on my wall. But yeah, it, it does have a good poster. Yeah, I do I do recall it. Um, Jason Takes Manhattan poster is amazing. Yeah, yeah, the Jason Takes Manhattan poster is cool, but it's like I wish I liked the movie more to justify it. The Scarface poster has been on the walls of too many rappers, so it kind of lost a little something to me. Uh, yeah, the alien poster is cool, but it, it's just not enough. It doesn't have enough visual. Wow. That I want to look at. Like for me, when I hang a poster on my wall, I want to walk over to it and like be able to look at it for a few seconds and go, Oh, wow. There's so many like little details here, uh, to, to really take in. Flubber has a great poster. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Indiana Jones has a great movie posters, but I don't, you know what it is about the Indiana Jones posters? I don't love. There's so much Brown. I don't know what it is. I just don't like all the Brown. I know. It's, I know. I know. That's all. But I'm super picky when it comes to movie posters. I just, I really am. Okay. The next one comes from, uh, let's see, where are we here? Uh, Here we go. Uh, Andy Sanchez says, John, I hope Terminator 1984 gets a 4K Blu-ray release. I have a Dirty Harry collection. Uh, I thought that was going somewhere else for a second there. I have a Dirty Harry collection, a regular Blu-ray, and it's awesome. I also, I think at one point I had the first Dirty Harry on Blu-ray. I think, yeah, I think I had all three. I don't, I had a few of them at least. Um... Yeah, the thing about the Terminator 1984 movie, if it does get a 4K release from James Cameron, I just hope they don't bastardize it like they did with the T2 Judgment Day release from Cameron, where they basically DNR'd the shit out of it, so everyone's skin looks like they're made out of plastic or wax, and it lost that film grain that makes it look phenomenal. And they also made the the new 4K release of T2 like almost more blue than it's ever been. And I don't like that. So, yeah, uh, hopefully it gets a 4K release and hopefully it looks good. But I, I'm i holding out hope on that. Uh, Kenji says, Merry Christmas, John. Enjoy the holidays. Not a question, but just a thought. They made a movie about Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg, but 
yet to make a movie about Bill Gates. Um, and thank you for the the super chat, man. A Merry Christmas to you. That is true. They have have they they have not made a Bill Gates movie yet. You know what it is? I don't think Bill Gates is as likable or as interesting of a human being as either two of those people that we just mentioned. Like Steve Jobs, innovative, interesting guy, um, had had a personality that stood out. Mark Zuckerberg was sort of weird and sort of like a recluse. And he made something that now everyone knows of called Facebook, right? It was a very timely movie. But you're right, Bill Gates. I could see them making a like Bill Gates Netflix series. I could see that being a thing. But is there enough comedy or humor or interesting stories to tell? Maybe, I don't know. But Bill Gates, the person, seems crazy. And don't get me started on the conspiracy theories surrounding Bill Gates. There's some weird ones. There's some weird ones. Look him up. Just saying. Um, but yeah, I, I, maybe that's why. Just he's he's a boring guy. And no one gives a shit. Oh, you made Microsoft Windows ninety five. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, uh, the next one comes from Yaman John. And thanks for the question, Kenji. Yaman John says in the seventies, Steve McQueen film Le Mans. There is no dialogue within the first 40 minutes, yet it's still engaging. No one today makes movies like this. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at something like uh, Castaway, once he hits that island, no one's talking for like an hour. No one's talking. But what they did with the sound design in Castaway was a beautiful thing. Because what they did is, if you watch Castaway, every sound that you hear on that island, the waves crashing in, they actually filmed that. Basically, they used none of the audio that they got on the island. It was unusable because there was too many sounds of water and and bushes and and things rustling in in the background. It was just unusable. So literally, they had to um, ADR the shit out of the entire movie once it's on the island. But if you listen to the sound design... It's almost like there's a momentum to it. It's like the waves crash here, the 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 the, the trees make a brushling sound. It's just it's almost perfect the way it keeps going. It's almost like a symphony of random sounds on the island to to the point where you don't need the dialogue anymore. And I enjoy movies like that. I actually I find them very relaxing. Um that's the reason I watch Castaway at least once a year. Like it it's so immersive. I don't want people just talking. Like show me, don't tell me. And when I watch Tom Hanks alone on the island, I'm just like so relaxed. I almost feel like I'm on the beach with him. And the the only difference is I can get up and go to my refrigerator and and get food and I don't have to open up a coconut and talk to a a volleyball. But but something about that is I like that. I, I wish more movies could just rely on not talking and just let us get immersed and watch somebody live their life. You know, because if you focus, like in reality... If someone were to focus on you for a day and make a movie about your life, how much talking are you doing half the day? You're not really, you're just living your life. I like that. It's almost like a weird form of voyeurism. And in a weird way, it's probably why people watch a lot of YouTube videos. You know, I I feel like that's a, a reason people like vlog videos. It's like sometimes you're just watching someone live their life. They're not talking all the time. They're just sort of doing things. I I don't know. Am I getting weird? I stand by it. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Jay Brown says, what is the next car after the CHR? I have no clue. I don't even want to think about buying a new car. That shit costs way too much money. But probably definitely another Toyota. Reliable, dependable. Uh, So probably like another Toyota. Maybe if I can afford it, maybe like a RAV4, which is like a SUV. Um, Maybe maybe that would be the next car. Uh, Lou says... The Batman reminds me of Blade Runner. Yeah, it has like a dystopian, rundown, rainy vibe to it. Yeah, it does. I mean, if Gotham City was 50 years in the future, I could see it looking like the city in Blade Runner. It just needs more neon lights. You're right. Yeah, you're right. I bet it took some influence. <clears throat> uh, Night King 01 says, <clears throat> uh, I need to take a drink of this. Night King 01 says, I like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, but I prefer the three musketeers. Both have Michael Wincott, 
but Musketeers, Oliver Platt, and Tim Curry. Yeah, but you don't like the Sheriff of Nottingham and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? I think he makes a better villain than Tim Curry did as, uh, what was he, like the high priest or whatever he was. I, I think Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves is the superior film that actually feels like an epic. Rob- the Three Musketeers, don't get me wrong, I really enjoy it. It's a fun, lighthearted adventure film, and I remember seeing it in theaters. I actually vividly remember going to see that movie and almost choking to death on a spree candy, which sounds really good right now. And I do like me some Oliver Platt and Chris O'Donnell, but yeah, I, I'm going to go. I think Robin of Prince of Thieves is better. Uh, Lou says Repo Man or Big Trouble Little China. Probably Big Trouble Little China. I, Repo Man to me was kind of cool until it got too weird. And I, I only vaguely remember the movie. I liked Emily West of in it and everything, but Big Trouble Little China, China by far is the superior movie. Uh, Lou says most MCU movies are so corny. Thomas Jane's Punisher and Ed Norton's Hulk don't deserve the hate. Oh, uh, no, they don't. I would say both of those films are probably better than 50% of Marvel movies. Like Edward Norton's Hulk, truly underrated. That's an entertaining movie to watch. It has a little bit of grit to it. People were trying. Like, it, it's a sufficient movie. It's super entertaining. I would say it's better than... 90% of phase four. I mean, we have to agree with that. I mean, if, if the Hulk had come out in phase four, the only other movie I think that would have been better than it would be like Spider-Man no way home. There you go. Andy Sanchez says, John, you should make videos about Vietnam war and the cold war. Your new YouTube name would be history with John Flickinger. Um, that's intriguing. That could, yeah, <laughs> I never, I never thought about talking about historical events to that extent. I don't know if I like history. I don't, I don't know if I would dedicate a YouTube channel to it, but thank you for that. I'll take it. Uh, I'll call it flicking history. There you go. Joey, Ru- Joey Ruiz, Lord of the Rings. By the way, my mouth is Getting tired from talking. Sorry, I, I know. Um, Joey Ruiz, Lord of the Rings says, "Did you like Funny Farm? How you like Scrooge Bill with Bill Murray Scrooged? You meant? I, I it was okay. It was definitely a product of the the eighties. Uh, Funny Farm, <sighs> Funny Farm. Why do I not? Let me look up Funny Farm." Oh, Chevy Chase. You know what? I think I might have seen this on like one time on HBO. I don't, I was never really into Funny Farm. Just not one of the Chevy Chase Chase, uh, movies I really enjoyed. I was always more of like a National Lampoon's Chevy Chase type guy. Uh, The next one comes from Guy from King's Highway. Do an impression of John Campia doing, doing. The Taken, I Will Find You speech. (laughs) You just laid a lot on me. Uh, John Campia doing the Taken uh, speech. Hang on. Give me one second here. How do I do this? (laughs) Um, I got to start with this. And for our next main topic, now, now, now take this with a grain of salt. Uh, uh, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. Uh, but, uh, but if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you and, and I will kill you because I'm Canadian. That's what I do. I don't know. Is that a John? I don't even know what that was. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to you, and I'm sorry to John Campia. I'm sorry. All right, let's keep going. Wog Review says, best state in the USA? Indiana, baby. I live right in the heart of the USA, Indiana. It's flat, it's simple, no one bothers you, and everything's going to be okay. I hope you like corn. Uh, I like Indiana. Uh, Best state, though? I don't know. 
It really depends. There's so many things to factor in. You are you talking about like geographical areas and the beauty of the state. Or are you talking about like the the cultural society in the state? Because there's a lot of beautiful states, but I don't want to live there. Uh, Kenji says, if Spielberg directed Dress Girl Dominion, do you think it would have sucked ass? I don't think Spielberg would have allowed there to be a subplot about giant locusts that take up 80% of the movie. I, I have a feeling he probably wouldn't have allowed that. And I think it would have been a better movie. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Levi. How's it going, Levi? You're one good-looking dude, John. Other than movies and YouTube, what are four things you simply can't live without? For me, it's exercising, anime, music, and books. Uh, what was the things I'm allowed to keep here? Other than movies and YouTube, um, how I are we talking about just physical things? I don't know. Freedom. I like the ability to wake up and do what I want to do on my schedule. That's one thing I don't think I could live without. Um, really, that's it. I mean, I, I like exercising. I don't do it as much as I once did, but I, I'm, I'm glad I have it. Music would definitely be another one. Now, if, I can't, if I can't have movies, I need music. Music, if I'm doing something, I need that sound to propel me. You know, sometimes I listen to music. It feels like the soundtrack to my own life. Like whenever I clean my office up, I'll put on some like 80s rock music and I'll clean it up. And I envision like a montage sequence happening and it helps. Guy from King's Highway says, what would you do if a make a wish kid's dream was to meet you and ask for your guidance in these final agonizing days of life? Jesus Christ. I meet them. Absolutely, man. Anytime, anywhere. But I have a feeling that would not be the last wish of a dying kid to meet me. No, I don't think it would. Um, also, there is a Bill Gates movie. It's called Snowpiercer. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> uh, Wog Review says, John, what are your thoughts on rugby? A man sport. It looks cool. It looks brutal. I would never play. It makes my knees hurt just looking at it. But I'm all for it. I'd rather watch rugby than professional football. I will say that. Uh, Big Tony Rockets says, Dead Man's Shoes is the most underrated revenge movie of all time. Dead Man's Shoes? I don't think I've seen it, man. I'd rather see the uh, sequel called A Dead Man's Dingley. Uh, Wog Review says, Thoughts on Logan Paul and WWE? Yeah, he's he's pretty good, man. He's athletic. He takes it serious. He trains for it. He looks good in the ring. I mean, like his second match he was in um, was entertaining. He pulled it off. I'd like to see what he does next. So I think he's pretty much impressed everybody at this point. Uh, Near Term says, last time flick, go get the Charles Bronson movie, Hard Times. You have 30 days to find it and watch or or no more super chats for you. Hugs. Thanks for that. What is it called? Hard times. What wasn't his other movies called like death? Was it called death proof or death sentence or what? What was the Charles Bronson movies called? God, I can't remember. I remember watching those in like 1993. Uh, Menez said that Walla. I can't read, but I tried. Menez said the Walla. I think that's closer. Love from India. Will you do the RR movie night? Please, John, please. I have not seen RRR yet. I know, I know, I know. At one point in my life, I will get around to watching it. I know people have said it's amazing. And it's like the second coming of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ had crazy, weird action sequences and slow-mos, which I would imagine he would, um, I will at one point get around to watching it. Death Wish, yeah, that's that's what we were going for. Death Wish, yeah. By the way, the Kevin Bacon movie, Death Sentence, is also really good. Okay, I'm going to answer just one or two more questions here, and here we go. We got one from Night King Owen. How often do you listen to Brothers in Arms from Fury Road? It's the best track of the movie. I do agree with that. Also, Extraction Point from Modern Warfare by Hans Zimmer. Um... 
not one of my, that's not one of my favorite Zimmer tracks. The Brothers in Arms I used to have on repeat. Um, but lately I've been listening to like, um, I like like 80s rock or like Five Finger Death Punch or Rammstein or like Metallica or um, some other stuff like that. But when it comes to soundtracks, like Zimmer, well, like the Dark Knight Rises score was always great. Um, also, like I like the Broken Arrow soundtrack quite a bit. I know that's a weird one. Okay, the next one comes from Bo Cylinder. Tried Sour Patch Kids for the first time. Thanks for changing my life. And Merry Christmas. No, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, and I hope you enjoy them. I hope I forever change your life and you're addicted to them. But always remember, brush your teeth. They're going to cause cavities. Uh, Lou says, watch Terry Gillum's Brazil. Great cyberpunk film. I've heard about that. Um, I'll look into it. A cyberpunk film sounds like a good time right now. Bruce Cook says, Damn, John, I just joined. Sorry I was late to the party. No worries, man. I'll do another one before the end of the year. Don't worry. MKF30 says, Which would you pick as the best movie between between T2 versus Aliens versus Predator? How would you rank them? Sorry for the tough question. Not tough at all. T2 is by far my favorite. Then I would go with Predator. Then I would go with Aliens. That was the easiest question of the night. Broken Arrow music. Oh, yeah. The Broken Arrow soundtrack is so underrated. Kyle says, John, what does Jake Gyllenhaal smell like? Well, the funny thing is I can answer this question honestly. This isn't for comedic value. It's not, not even a joke. I met him. I took a picture with him. And I did smell him. <laughs> um, I vaguely remember him smelling okay. He smelled fresh, like fresh denim. <laughs> because he was wearing a denim suit. I, I'm not kidding. So yes, that's what Jake Gyllenhaal smells like. John is head of the table now. Thank you for that. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up this live show here. And now I do want to thank you guys all and Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. You guys can keep the change. Uh, but in all seriousness, thanks for joining me once again. Um, Christmas is in a few days. I'm going to do my best to do another live stream between now and Christmas. I will try. I really will. Um, hopefully we do. I think I can pull it off. Why not? Uh, but either way, guys, thanks for watching. And like I said earlier, if you missed the uh, the retrospective 10-year anniversary video right here on this channel, where it's a look back of 25 minutes of gloriousness, that's a word, um, covering the last 10 years on this channel, go watch that video. It's uh, it's it's here. It's now. It, just check it out. Uh, okay, one more question from Night King 01. Recognizer from Tron Legacy. Yeah, the Tron Legacy score or soundtrack was really good from Daft Punk. Also, some catchy stuff I, I do occasionally listen to. And sometimes if I'm feeling really like, I don't know, the what's the word I'm looking for? Techie, I guess. I put all the strobe lights on in my room and listen to the, the, the score from Tron Legacy and I pretend I'm a robot. Uh, <laughs> Night King 01 has one last thing here and it says good night. Well, good night to you too. And good night to all of you. Thanks for watching guys. Stay safe and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.